Well, how long have we been frozen? The calendar says it's cyber year 2022. Oh boy, I can't wait to play with the Cro-Magnon. Hey, welcome to Patch Pals. It's your pal Jacob. And I'm Jacob's pal, Wes. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at the brand new Soft Pop 2 from Bastel in collaboration with Casper Electronics. Now, there are a ton of semi-modular synthesizers out there, as well as groove boxes and mono synths, but the Soft Pops 2 is a unique and very flexible device. So we just wanted to highlight it and take a look at some of its really cool functionality. But before we get to the jams, let's take a quick look at what's going on here. So real fast, if we look at the soft pops here, going from left to right, we've got a whole bunch of sequencer controls. Here we have the oscillator with its coarse frequency and pitch modulation depth. Right next to it, we've got our filter cutoff and our filter mod depth. Here we have the envelope generator with a rate control and a shape control. Above the faders is fine tune with a one octave range, resonance control, and a unique feedback circuit for the filter that goes from soft to pop to pixel, which is completely unruly. Over here we have a cycle switch for the envelope generator, some global mode buttons for the sequencer and mode selection, and some I.O. level controls and MIDI input. And, and this, this is the patch bay. The Soft Pop 2 has a lot of power and uniqueness from the way that you interface with it. It's very simple and immediate. Instead of dealing with any screens or menus, you've got an orb and a few buttons. It's inherently a very musical instrument, but it has all the tools you need to get experimental if you want to go there. Now, if you're in your mid-20s like me, maybe you grew up playing racing games on your Super Nintendo. They were full of these super arpeggiated, very up-tempo kind of synth-driven music. Soft Pop actually turns out to be the perfect platform to kind of revive and tap into that nostalgia. I've just got a couple patch cables here to kind of shape my timbres a little bit, but you just pop in some sequencers, record some patterns like that, and you're off to the races, literally, if we're doing this sort of racing uh, video game music. So you might have noticed during the little jam that I just did that in addition to constantly moving parameters around a little bit, I'm occasionally punching in new sequences and adding notes on the fly. And that's really one of the strengths of the soft pop. You never have to stop what you're doing. You never have to stop performing to kind of change things up and push things in a new direction. It's just always moving, going fast all the time, and it's a whole lot of fun. There's a ton to be excited about in the new Soft Pop 2, but some of the things that really, really make it a fun and standout device are how Bastel and Casper have taken familiar ideas and the concept of an acid groove box and really made it their own. They've imparted a lot of their own DNA and their own style onto it, and the result is a truly magical box that is filled with new and old ideas. It can almost immediately fit into any workflow, whether you're using modular gear, other hardware, or a combination of the two. 
And one of my favorite examples of this is how robust the sequencer is. So let's make a quick sequence here and then we can expand upon it and dive in a little bit deeper to see how cool the sequencer really is. So let's select a quick scale and we'll hit play and then we'll throw in some gates here and let's see what we got. Okay, that's boring as heck. So let's pop up this mod fader, which is gonna pop the sample and hold into this mod here. And then that's gonna go through our scale, quantize it and give us some notes. Let's take a listen. Cool, cool. Let's record some of that by holding down record and moving the mod fader. So we'll be getting different levels of the sample and hold injected and committed to the sequencer, right? Okay, awesome. You'll notice that I popped the mod fader down there because if this is up, it's gonna keep injecting the sample and hold into the quantizer. So we wanna hold that down so we can see what we recorded, right? And it sounds pretty good. It's pretty cool here, right? And we can do that endlessly. We could leave the mod fader up if we wanted, or we could just pop it up and record some new jazz whenever we want. So that's really, really nifty. It makes note entry just a breeze. And if we want to get more specific and really dial in our notes, we can just enter record while the uh, sequencer is stopped. And then you can plug in the notes precisely if you so need. Now how we can take this a step further and make it even more fun is you'll notice that there is a input for this mod fader on the patch bay. So we could take a channel of our voltage block out, let's say, and then clock it with the soft pops here. And the result is gonna be very cool. So let's take a look. <laughs> This amazing take on flexibility permeates itself throughout the soft pops. There are slide gates, MIDI gates, sync inputs, outputs, molts, little utility cross faders. This thing is jammed with features that make it not only incredibly versatile and able to communicate with your other instruments, they make it absolutely fun on a bun to explore and try new things. So let's take a look at a few more fun patches and see what else the Soft Pop 2 has up its sleeve.
So you'll notice at the top of the soft pops patch bay, Bastel has labeled this a feedback communicator, which is an interesting way to kind of think about the patching, the internal routing of the soft pop and how it affects how you perform on the instrument. Now, if we look at the back of the soft pop, you'll see that there's a very detailed diagram of how everything is kind of connected together and what all is going on here internally. Obviously, Bast will put a lot of care into designing the internal routing of the soft pop so you can get a lot of cool, fun musical ideas going without even having to open up your patch cables that they throw in the box for you. But of course, the patch points allow you alternative means of routing signals around the unit and getting a lot more experimental or varieties of sounds out of it that you wouldn't be able to otherwise. Now let's take a look at how I use feedback patching to ponder my orb and get some really interesting color combinations out of it. I've got a bit of a dense patch going here, but what's going on is actually pretty simple and can be traced down to just the core idea of using the envelope generator to ping the filter when it's resonant. For a little extra noise and grit, I'm running the envelope output into the external input that you'd normally use for like your guitar or some other groove box or instrument. When you crank up the input gain, you get some nice overdrive effects. And in this context, it's really interesting to use DC voltages to kind of get weird noise and artifacts and stuff out of it that you wouldn't otherwise hear on an instrument that doesn't have a white noise generator. I'm also using the molt up here at the top to redistribute the sample and hold to a bunch of other destinations on here, like the filter's cutoff frequency, as well as the rate and shape control of the envelope generator. So that's a soft look at the soft pop. Two. Oh, we're doing it. Hopefully in this video, you got a good idea of the things we really love about this thing. Uh, it's just awesome. It's very fun. This is kind of a unique take on a lot of very familiar ideas, but it's, it's a new way of uh, thinking about them. It's a new perspective and we just love it. All right, and that's all for today. Make sure that you folks send us pictures of your dogs on Instagram, like this video, Subscribe and we'll check, check you, you later. later.